support request? Yes, sir. Uh, ultimately, the developers of Grove Point have come back to the county requesting um, really a, a rezoning for R10. You can see the dominant effect here is on the southern portion of the property, which is off the end of Dasher Grove Road. Most of the property is currently zoned R10. What the applicants want to do is that southern section that is currently zoned R21, or minimum half acre lot, they'd like to rezone and reconfigure that so they can take advantage of that lower R10 density in their standards. With, with that, they've submitted the request. Uh, I can try to address any uh, questions you might have. I can tell you that based on the preliminary site plan that we've seen from the property, uh, they exceed R10 standards, but they do seek that zoning so that some of the lots can go below that half acre lot size. With that, they actually requested to rezone a much larger picture so they can take in some of those smaller R1 snippets that you see to the east and the north and the south. So with that, um, we have to answer any questions you might have about those differences, but ultimately at the end of the day is they want to take kind of their last remaining phases to the east and make it an all R10 zoning rather than a, a split R10 and R21 zone. I know that the um, commissioners, you had some questions at your work session about the 41 improvements. And I can tell you that um, in the near term, which I think is defined as, you know, 2017 is when I think we're, we'll begin on this project. Um, beginning at Dasher Grove Road, heading south all the way to North Alasta Road is what they're calling Old 41 North Phase 2 improvements. And the engineer expects there to be a mixture of three to five lane sections from that road all the way down to North Alasta. They don't have the engineering done yet, but I wanted to tell you that that is what I would consider a short-term project. So we anticipate improvements on that section of the road, uh, and I wanted to give you all an update. I know you had some questions about that. Okay, thank you, sir. Well, commissioners, any questions for staff on this request this evening? Just a quick question. Commissioner Gladwell. Jason, is there any concern about the neighborhood um, activity center that's, <clears throat> according to the future map, is actually not happening. So it seems like the development in that area, mm -hmm. the development factor is not the support of what the future plan wants us to do. Other than doing that, I don't think that's the age or maybe part of that's the age when it's part of the building center. Mm -hmm. I think they put the neighborhood activity center designation on that property because they saw this growing as a fairly dense master plan community. And so with that, when they had the existing commercial there that has yet to been developed, um, I think that was the intent was they anticipated density and development here to be developed at a, a greater density or intensity than like the suburban area. So the neighborhood, uh, neighborhood, neighborhood activity center was not required mixed use of some sort of Commercial. It, no, it's just residential. it doesn't require it, but it certainly is in more favor of it than a suburban area. A neighborhood activity center, in my opinion, allows more intensity and a greater mixture of uses than in a suburban area, which is more classic residential. They still do some non-residential uses in there, but as far as requiring it like a PD requirement, no way. But I think it is more encouraging, which is probably why you see um, the early phase has got that CH zoning approved, which was pretty intense for that area, and we came back and did a CG when they did the piece of property behind Valwood. But I, I think that was the motivation. I mean, you're seeing some uses actually developed commercially now at the daycare center that is actually starting to spur on this area, as well as they have a pretty intense park in the middle of that development. But I think when this was done, I'm going to say 10 years ago at the last comp plan update, I think the motivation was is they had a, a master plan that actually planned out the property from Old 41 all the way over to Valdell Road, and they were anticipating greater density, like some PD requests, on the left-hand side with the more classic, larger residential lot on the east-hand side, which is probably why you see that split of neighborhood activity center and suburban area. I think the master plan that I've seen has larger lots, or had larger lots to the east and smaller lots to the west as you got closer to Valdell. Any other questions for staff on this? I'm just curious, if, uh, just for general knowledge, have you seen the, the lot breakdown on this? this have. Yeah. Just curious. I mean, like the number of lots on yes. the newer phases? If you, if you give that to us. I gave you the overall master plan. Oh, yeah, I see it. Which does show, um, they, 
they do show generic lots in there. Do you see that site plan? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Let me look at that. And that. I don't know if they give us an actual number. I know the applicants and developers are here. Yeah. I do know, let me see if I've got a better number for you on that southern survey that we have. I don't, sir, but I can get that. No problem. No problem. Okay, commissioners, no other questions from staff. We'll move along this request. Any, anyone here tonight wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? And state your name and your address for the record, please. Gary Cannon, 905 Moss Way. Um, to address that south property, the, the, the intent of Grove Point from a long time ago, we, it has not changed. That southern property there that you can see in white, uh, We've got to go to R10 zoning because we can't go to an R15, which used to be the catch-all, and now it's dry. But we've got a plan for the southern piece already engineered with only 50 lots, and they range from a minimum of 15,000 square feet up. There's one over two acres in there. Orland will have 50 lots in that particular. We're trying to make it a little bit bigger than we did phase one, So, uh, and we, we did a tree survey, survey in there to save the live oak. So, it's engineered a little bit differently without curb and gutter, but it's not going to be an R10 development. No 80 foot lots. And then the top portion will be an R10, just like we did phases two and four at Grove Point. But the initial uh, intent that we've had all along has not changed. And I've got a copy of the engineered plat that uh, Lovell has done for that south section. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Any, any questions for the presenter? Commissioner, any questions? You just answered my statements. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone here wishing to speak against this request? Please come forward. Please come forward, sir. State your name and your address for the record, sir. My name is uh, Jim Seven. I reside at 4765 San Saba Drive. Property. Address again, 4765 San Salvador. Okay. Right. My property abuts that southern portion that is in question. Um, we uh, built four years ago, Caldwell Becker was our realtor. We were certainly under the impression that that property, well, we knew it was going to be developed at some time, but we wanted to make sure that it continued to be uh, in continuity with the rest of what we might call that southern portion called Mayhem section, which is south of, uh, just south of uh, Dasher Grove Road. Yes, sir. Okay. Most of those homes are on uh, the half acre lot, some are a little bit bigger. Most of that's what it is. I heard a developer state that uh, he's going to keep it pretty much in continuity as he brings it in that direction, and I certainly hope that it will, because if you walk that property, there are some beautiful 100-year-old oaks sitting there. And to put it into an all R10, the 80-foot 80 foot, 80 foot front lots, would just, would just pile everything up. It would be pathetic to destroy such a beautiful piece of property. And as you continue, if you even look on Google Maps, if you continue east, it's a long-range plan to go all the way to the Alamar Road. Uh, again, that is heavily wooded back in there. Beautiful oaks. That is a gorgeous piece of property. Uh, I just hope that going forward, long term, the zoning board protects that property. And if you're going to be developing, do it very carefully. And put uh, nice homes, nice lots, not just plowed under and turned into a house of hills or something like that. So that's my comment. Any questions for presenters and commissioners? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak against this request? Please come forward. Anyone else wishing to speak against this request? I got one question, Gary. Yes. Just, just off what the gentleman just said. Just you yes. said you've done it. You have done a tree survey yeah, out there. We surveyed Sam Paulson surveyed all the oak trees there, and, and uh, local engineers here too. They designed. You know, we normally have straight in roads, but we've got roads snaking in there to protect the trees. And we've got some lots, you know, we'll have a minimum of 
100 foot lot and the next one may be 113 feet because we've got to protect the root base of a tree right. and you know if you need to talk to an engineer you can certainly speak to that but we we took uh, spent a lot of money trying to protect you know we don't want to take down a 200 year old tree and i thought i heard you say that Jeff. i just want to let yeah. the, the presenter yeah and i'll, I'll be glad to show them the plat when we get through the back so it's got your yeah, light on this too y'all are basically you're probably i think your lot's 18,000 square feet Yes. And we'll have some of them. The minimum at phase one was 15, and we'll be an average of probably R19 if you've had the zone, but we don't have it to do that. Okay. So that's how we go to this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A little bit better about that, sir. Just mm -hmm. Thank good deal. You. Thank you, sir. Commissioners, do we need to have any discussion amongst myself on this request? I just have to mm -hmm. Commissioner Gladden? Is this Yes, yes, ma'am. And that's what I was going to point your attention to is on this site plan, they <coughs> some general lines that are consistent with um, what they turned in for construction plans on that south side and in aqua color, which depicts about 50 lots um, that are, you can see, they're larger than the northern section, which is about 108. And I actually have an extra copy of that neighbor would like this copy. Um, it's got my scribbles on it, but I mean, it's something that you can look at it, what they've seen. So you can see the difference in density between 50 and 108 between, you know, they, in my opinion, they're not maxing out the southern section. And to me, the most important are the edge conditions along the lots that are numbered 6 through 12. And you can see where they tried to line up the lot lines with those. I can only find two areas where a neighbor has, you know, two lots behind it rather than just one. Can I, can I ask a follow-up question? Please, ma'am. Um, and I understand that in the green area, which is labeled R21 mm -hmm. right now, and I see that the lots in the southern area, they are trying to match the, the lot in sizes to the west. In fact, a lot of them line up. Yeah, they cross over. But, um, so are some of the lots in there are just too small to remain yes. in the current. Uh, so, That's right. Current standards are for a 21,780 square foot lot. Some of those lots are absolutely below that standard. Um, R21 in that particular zoning width-wise will allow you hold on, I'll tell you, to do a 100 foot lot. So, you know, it appears they meet at least 100 feet, but in some cases, they want to take advantage of that lower lot size. So is this drawing, does that illustrate what they would like to do once they receive an R10 zoning, or is this what's currently allowed within the existing? I think that's what they would like to do. Because the plans they turned in, how we came to this conversation is, I believe the developers honestly thought they could develop as such, and when we, re when we went through the development process, we realized, hey, you realize it's R21 zoning, it doesn't meet R15 standards, which is an old zoning we used to have. We don't have R15 anymore. And I think that's where this conversation started about, oh, well, we, what would it take to get there? Well, you'd have to rezone, and here we are. And so I think that's what started this conversation is they turned in their engineer plans to construct the subdivision. We realized some of the lot sizes were, were below 21,000 square feet. We had a conversation and realized, oh, okay, well, that's not zoned R15 or R10. It's half-acre lots. And so they chose, rather than to develop with half acre lots, they chose to try to rezone to get here. So is the minimum uh, footprint of a potential value unit, is there a minimum to that? Oh, you mean square footage wise? Mm -hmm. In their covenants, yes. I'm not familiar with it, but as far as a county standard, we wouldn't say your minimum covenant, you know, your minimum square footage for this phase would be like 1,800 square feet. That would be a covenant rule, not a county rule. Well, I mean, for their proposed Yes, I I believe there is. I don't know that by heart, but I believe their covenants address the minimum square foot. Yes, ma'am. Yes, actually. Here. Mr. Glad, I have a question for you. The minimum square footage, it, we, 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 as we intended, it will be the same square footage as phase one, in the, which is 2,200 square feet now. And nothing, none of that's changed. The only thing that changed was our inability to get our 15 zoning like we did for phase mm -hmm. one so that's what, how we found ourselves back here but all the lots actually we've increased um, 
uh, we've made the lot sizes bigger in this particular phase than we did phase one. And some of that change is, you know, you, this property's got some wetland behind it and a different size shape, so you've got, a, you know, I, I'd love not to have a two acre uh, lot in there, but we do. And, you know, for uh, curves and radiuses and things like that, and to save those trees, it just worked out that way. So you've got a range from 18,000 square feet to, you know, so, and one more follow up question. Sure. The, the house size in the current, in the R10 area, yeah. the, uh, is that also, is the minimum also 2200? No, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, mm -hmm. no, the R10 is 1800 because those are small lots. And okay. that's the same as we have in phase two and phase four of that development. Okay, so, so you, those wouldn't change So either. your government actually spells out yes, yes. The, the size of the house. Sure. That size. And that's controlled the Homeowner Association, they're members of it. Okay. That's exactly that. Yeah. And I think that satisfies this, this yeah. So our original intent on what we wanted to do has not changed, but we've had to come back because the regs have changed in that time. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioners, any other questions? Most of ourselves? If not, I will take a motion on this request this time. Mr. Commissioner, I'll make a, recommendation, make a motion to recommend approval. Of REZ 2016-17. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Hall. Commissioner, any discussion on this motion? There being none, I will take a a second on Commissioner Hall's recommendation. Second. I have a second for Commissioner Clinton. All in favor of this request, please signify by raising your right hand. Ms. Carmel, that's 5-0. Thank you very much. Jason, you did a good job. Thanks, sir. <coughs> we will now...